Howdy, everybody. Welcome to the Brother Sister Show, a family owned and operated podcast where two siblings keep in touch by talking about movies. This week, we're talking about Anthony's pick, Paranormal Activity. But before we get into that, hello, Anthony. How are you? Hello. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing all right. It hasn't <laughs> been, we're recording this on a Sunday and we recorded like early, too. I didn't even know you could wake up this early <laughs> <laughs> on a Sunday. No, yeah, I've been up. We well, I had to finish the movie. We oh, you finished watching it this it. morning? <laughs> yeah, we we started watching it, um, Kayla and I and our roommates, Friday night. But then our roommates fell asleep because they had a really long day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, not much has happened. Uh, I took a test. It went all right. Uh, online tests are weird. Yeah, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing has happened. <laughs> what about you? Well, I cleaned my closet, and I'm very proud of it. Um, but, like just organized it or was it like dirty dirty like with dirt in it <laughs> like what do you mean it it was just I mean nothing in my apartment is like super dirty I just have problems with organization mm. um, okay so oh sorry my auxiliary cord is going crazy again so um yeah I just it took I, I took the time to like organized by season and then by color and then I got baskets so I can put everything away it's just very nice Damn. it feels and this is also um I, I hate that I kind of hate cheesy sayings but it is true people say like if you have a cluttered room then your mind is also cluttered so if you organize it then you can start to think clearly but I am starting to think that that there is some truth to that <laughs> because uh -huh. um I I record in my closet as well, so it's nice to like have a space that I don't hate coming to <laughs> to do right. something that I like doing. <clears throat> and I'm gonna make it like a little a little nook for just recording and whatnot. Fun. Yeah, I'm excited. Maybe I'll if people like organization stuff, then I can send a picture in the Discord. Um I have a before and after video and I even have a little like um lay like a little laying area for um for Ari. I put like a pillow and a blanket. <laughs> and cuz my closet has like a built-in shelf and there's one at the very bottom that I I don't really want it's like basically on the floor and I don't really want to put stuff on the floor. Um so yeah, I put a little Made a little area oh, nice. for him so that when I record, he can just like leave me the hell alone because he always needs to be near me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, oh, and kind of like unsolicited advice. I it's hard for me. I love the act of organizing. Like whenever I get into something, I get like super into it. I get like hyper focused. So I like finish it super easily. But it's just so hard to get me to start doing it. Um and I did it with a friend like we didn't we didn't like we weren't in constant contact the whole day but um we set up a day where we're like okay Saturday at I think it was like five my time it was probably different ever but like it was Saturday at five we're gonna clean our closets together and then we would like text each other with ideas or be like like I told I was like I don't know like do people how do people organize their clothes like, is it by color? Is it by season? And she was like, both. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, it was just nice to have somebody else that's like, like to bounce ideas off of. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think we're going to do that with just other places. So that's that was really helpful for me. If you if you want to organize and you know you can do it, but it's just really hard for you to like get the emotional bandwidth to like get up and do it um, just because you think it'll be daunting. It is um, a lot easier and funner when you know somebody else is doing it at the same time and y'all are like struggling together. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So that was, yeah, it was, it was good. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I think next I'm going to do, I have like a pantry closet laundry room hybrid kind of thing. Oh um, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a mess. I, it, it's hard to like figure out what to do with the space. Um, but yeah, I think that'll be next. There's just like a bunch of places like my bathroom and but it seems it makes it like for me, I get overwhelmed really easily. So I need to like put it into little like um, pockets of stuff that I can do. So, Bite sized yeah. chunks. 
Exactly. And if somebody has any like tips on how to organize, I would be very grateful because it's still a struggle for me to be an organized person. <laughs> but yeah, I, I can't really as in terms of what I watched, I can't really think of much. I know I kept hearing about this one movie called Coherence. I think it's on Hulu and and Never Prime, heard of it. maybe. I keep I keep seeing it on TikTok, and then I saw somebody mention it on Twitter, and I was like, okay, this is the last straw. I need to watch this. <laughs> um, I so I thought it was it was like sci-fi. When I looked at the genres of it, it said like sci-fi slash horror slash whatever, and it wasn't. The only thing I will say is that it wasn't. It wasn't scary. So I don't really agree with it being a horror or maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe that's well, that's not for me to say. Let me not put it into a box, but um, it just wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. But it was. It was weird. I, I think you would like it, Anthony. If you do you like movies where you like have to it's like kind of mind bendy, like you have to figure out what's happening and there's a lot of yeah. thinking. I think you would like it. I would I would recommend you watch it. And as somebody who likes just making things, um I think you would appreciate at least I appreciated how simple it was. How like I could tell how they made it. Um and oh, it just okay. seemed very doable. And so I really like movies like that. Especially well that's perfect for this movie. Um I love watching movies that seem very doable. Because as a like a young creative uh, that just has so many ideas that if I wanted to make my like the idea I love the most, it would probably take a big budget. And so that's not realistic. So it's nice to see, you know, stuff, projects that were made with little to no budget and still are really cool and really interesting. Yeah, so I would I recommend it. I think it's good for um, <coughs> a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> Not a lot of people, but whenever I do get like approach, people know that I love movies. So they'll ask me for like recommendations for a movie night. And I always recommend movies that like this, that are, um, that start discussions because after a movie night, if you don't like, if the movie's not interesting, then it's kind of, I don't know, like if, if the conversation falls flat, it's kind of awkward. But if you have a movie where it's really engaging, or if it has a, an ending where you're like, what the fuck just happened? It's yeah. nice to have that as like a conversation piece at the end. And more of a <laughs> conversation very, yeah, rather so I, than, oh, that happened. Yeah. Or like, I don't know. There's there's different kinds of movies for depending on what kind of mood you want. Um, that's why when I do like the stuff on Instagram, asking for people to like send me a mood or a genre, <coughs> that's... Typically, I typically like to know what kind of mood people want to be in. And if people want to, like, be in a mood to um, figure shit out or to think about something, then this is mm -hmm. the kind of movie for that. I usually recommend the one I love, but I'm going to recommend this one now. It's going to be in oh. my rotation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and if you I think I'm going to do one. I don't know when I haven't done one in a while, but if you want to see that on our Instagram, like you can, sometimes I'll do, if you can send like a, a genre or a mood for like a recommendation, then I'll recommend something to like for you. Um, you can follow us on our Instagram at brother sister show. And we also have Twitter at bro sis show that Anthony occasionally tweets on. Man, I really thought about tweeting that one tweet on the brother sister show. I thought you were. <laughs> man i so i had a vision how was it doing at the last time I, I saw it it had like 200 views it at the time of recording it has 630 dang it is my best performing tweet you know what anthony <clears throat> i've been thinking about this a lot you need to get back on tiktok i think you do i think right now you're not on it you're not going back because of pride because you you said you were never going to be on it again but i think you need to because if I, you if you like if you want to do those short kind of videos it, it's really easy when one hits to get like a ton of views not easy like it has to be good content but i feel like the one i made would have probably popped off i don't want to be like but I, it was just I think so I too or there's some ideas that you have where I'm like I feel like I don't know I just see videos on my TikTok and I'm like Anthony could have done this and it could have popped off 
<laughs> well, there you go. Join TikTok, Anthony. Maybe. <laughs> it's got, you have to be on it more. I understand the annoyance of it, but now my For You page, I mean, sometimes there's the occasional, like, one that I don't like, but it's amazing. <laughs> it's just annoying. I don't want to get into it. It's too, it's too much. I think it's worth it, but whatever. All right. I don't have any movie news. I didn't look anything up. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything either. Nothing's Wait, really no, happening. Eternals is got pushed back. Of course. I mean, okay, let me go into a little rant because I it's so stupid. I don't know why p- people have still have these reactions where they're like, I don't, like I, th- I think the last thing I saw was like, maybe Dune or something was pushed back. And my reaction when I see that is like, yeah, of course it is. And then people are like, oh man, it's getting pushed back again. Oh, of course it's, what do you, like, what world are you fucking living in? Of course it's being pushed back. We don't deserve to watch movies right now. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'll never see (laughs) Tenet. And honestly, like, I don't, I, I mean, I am the biggest fan of going to the movie theater. I love it. I love it so much. I have no desire to do it right now. So I just don't understand why people want to go so bad. Like why it is such a like, Oh, I I just want to go to the movies. Like I understand. I I'm scared for them to close, you know, because of everything that's happening. And I do want to help them, but like, I'm not going to go to a fucking closed room with everybody's germs. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It's just, breeding grounds especially with those fucking idiots that won't wear masks like no 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 <laughs> not doing it oh and uh for uh <clears throat> the snyder cut i think henry cavill's gonna shoot like do some uh reshooting for it <laughs> nah, but uh, i didn't re- I-, I just saw that headline i was like whatever <laughs> <laughs> if they get rid of that mustache then fine <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I have no no thoughts about that movie. Well, let's talk about a better one. <laughs> Great transition. Transition. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but before that, let's take a quick break. <laughs> After moving into a suburban home, a couple becomes increasingly disturbed by a nightly demonic presence in Paranormal Activity. Directed and written by Oren Pelly, which is actually, this is his first directorial debut. And starring Katie Featherston, Micah, or Mika Sloat, I think, in the movie, and Mark Friedrichs. I had no idea that their names were their names. Yeah. <laughs> its estimated budget was about $15,000. Opening weekend, it made about a 78000 And... Throughout the U.S., it grossed about one hundred and eight million dollars, and worldwide, one hundred ninety three million. Which, that's I, I don't know if y'all know how to do math, but that's a lot. That's a lot of money. <clears throat> it made way more than it, what it what it cost. Um, as as for how the critics received it, six point three out of ten on IMDb, eighty three percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and a sixty eight percent on Metacritic. Pretty across, like, or pretty like. Uh... What's what am I? What's the word? It's not consistent. What's the opposite of consistent? It's pretty inconsistent. <laughs> Sorry, I lost so loud into the mic. Um, yeah, I guess that's the word. Yeah, it's pretty inconsistent across the board. I don't. I think it's too low. But I I love this movie. I I will say, I kind of I'm kind of with Rotten Tomatoes on this one. The eighty three percent. Um, I guess what whatever. But I before we get into the specifics of the movie, yeah, I thought a lot more happened in this one. I just because there's like so many different ones, I guess I haven't seen any of them in a really long time that they all kind of like merged together. I mean, I don't know if we'll ever watch any of the other ones, so I can like my I've seen I think every single one. Yeah. Um even I there was one like a fourth one that is <laughs> I honestly forgot it happened and I wish I could f- always forget that it happened but um I think the problem with the 
the problem with the reason I love this movie and the problem with the rest of them is that they do too much. They do. I think this one does the perfect amount. Actually, two I really like. Two, two, two I think is, is good. A, two is a really good sequel. Um, I three. wish they would have ended there. I kind of like three. I think three four has is a this. lot of good elements. Like I, I think ugh, I was listening to a podcast. I don't remember which one it is, but um, <clears throat> they do a really cool thing with three where they put it on the fan. Do you remember that? They put the like camera on the fan so that it like moves around. Oh, that was yeah. a really cool way to That's, scare people. Yeah, um, we can talk more about the sequels after this because I kind of want to get into a little bit of it. Okay, yeah, but I, I agree that well, I think no, I've seen this movie so many times that I knew exactly what's going to happen. But I guess to kind of tar- like start <laughs> to start this discussion off, I do want to talk about. Just my overall experience with this movie, because I have a lot of history <laughs> with this movie. Um, mm-hmm. So I I think I've kind of branded myself now as somebody who likes movies, specific, but specifically somebody who loves scary movies. But I was not that way for a very long time. <laughs> like when I was younger, up until this movie, basically, I was terrified of anything scary. And I would avoid it because I was like, I don't understand why people want to be scared. It's not fun. Um, And then I watched this movie and I understood. But yeah, I think it was the first movie that I I specifically remember that TV downstairs. Do you remember that TV? That it was like not a flat screen, like the opposite of that. The um, the one with the like big back, the big butt to it. The cubes. Um, (laughs) Yeah, Um, it was on that one. Do you remember that one TV stand that had a door? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what happened to it. It's still it's still uh it's still upstairs. We still have that one. Is it? Is it the one yeah. that is on the TV like in the playroom? Yeah, it has like a SpongeBob sticker on oh. the, the middle. Yeah, it's still okay, there. Okay, well I just remember that like watching that TV and seeing a trailer for this movie. And I was yeah. like, what is that? Because I'd <laughs> never seen or I don't know if I've I probably have heard of Blair Witch Project, but I'd never seen a movie like this before where it was like found footage it looked real i didn't recognize anybody in it um yeah it, i was just so obsessed with it and i know i remember they they didn't go to like it wasn't just a regular um distribution like it didn't just go to every theater you know how every movie does now it was very it was an indie movie so it was very <laughs> um limited in the release and right. the whole thing was that they like their one of their marketing ploys was if you want it to come to your city then you need to request it like you need to go online or do something wow. to uh like put in your city and i did that i did that multiple times because i was like i need to see this movie <laughs> and i didn't understand why but i was like so obsessed with it um and then finally, I don't, I remember us being at one of our grandmother's houses and, or yeah, so we were like at her house and I don't remember what we were doing. Like, I don't know if it was on Halloween or something, but we decided to get tickets to see it. And it was, I mean, dad, I think mom and dad went with us so they can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was like at midnight and it was also the first like midnight movie that I went to. So we went and I was so, I was so nervous. <laughs> like before, now when I go to see scary movies, I don't really, like I feel nothing. <laughs> but I feel nothing. I feel nothing at all times. But whenever I was younger and I was just getting into them, it was like the same feeling that you feel when you're waiting for like a roller coaster to start. Yeah, I, it was I know like that, that. feeling. <laughs> yeah, like I was just so nervous and I didn't know what to expect. It was just so... I was so scared. Um, Yeah. And then we watched the movie. It was such a good experience because I I think it was with the exception of signs. I think it was the first scary movie that I'd seen in theaters. And so I didn't know how fun it is to see a scary movie in theaters. Mm -hmm. So it was just a good time. The ending was like fucking terrified me. And I also don't know. I think this happened, but I don't know if I just made it up in my mind. But (laughs) I remember after the movie ended you know how like after it ends and the lights start to like um 
like just turn on like really slowly they didn't turn the lights on at all and so everybody was (laughs) sitting there and waiting like for the lights to turn on and they just didn't and so we just had to leave in the dark and it was so fucking scary and i to this day i don't know if they did it on purpose um they must have that's so awesome i'd love to do that yeah and i was like this is amazing like i didn't i think it was the first time i'd realized that horror films are an experience that it's not Mm -hmm. like that why the re the reason people want to go and see them, especially in theaters. Um, yeah. And then every time I watch it, I think about that and it just, it is a good memory. It doesn't really scare me. I do. I think that night I was scared, but I knew that I like loved it. Um, and I do, sometimes I do get scared by movies. Rarely do I see one where it sticks with me and I like can't sleep at night. I think the last one I want to say was the conjuring. Actually, no, I think it was The Witch. That one freaked me out. But yeah, and that's the moment I knew that I loved scary movies. And that's my story. I don't story. think I went with you guys. <laughs> I think I was no. too scared. Well, it came out in 2007, so you were seven. Seven. <laughs> and I don't yeah, remember I don't what it was I rated. Went. I don't think it was rated R. But I, I can't imagine mom and dad taking you when you're that young. <laughs> but yeah, very fun. Do you remember your first scary movie? In theaters? In theaters? No. It might have, <laughs> honestly, probably might have been that Apollo uh, really? 18 or 13. I mean, maybe. And you just <laughs> got so overwhelmed that you cried. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't forgot to ask mom and dad if they remember that. They didn't say anything, so I'm assuming they do. Um, all right. So now on to the movie. So we start with a message from Paramount thanking the families of Katie and Mika. And like we said, it's the actors names, but it's also the names of the characters, like the exact first and last names. Um, oh, and it's also thanking the STPD. And it also so a couple of fun facts about this. So this movie, although released by Paramount, it's unique in the fact that it the studio's logo does not appear it just mentions them but their logo is nowhere on the movie and it does not have any opening or closing credits except for one establishing copyright that's that's so cool i like that because it it really sets like you said this movie is an experience and you're like from the get-go you're set to it because it really feels like (laughs) it's just uh like home videos that you're watching exactly and i i don't think I don't think this movie, well, I don't remember it being marketed as like, this is real. Um, so it was like one of those like added like fun factors. It's not like Blair Witch where that one I think was, mar- I can't speak of ex- <laughs> from experience, but that was marketed as if it was real. And it, it kind of follows, this movie is a very, um, you could tell they follow a lot of like inspirations from that movie, but it does it very modernized. So, Definitely. like, instead of marketing the, that it's real, it does these um, little indicators to make it feel like it's not <laughs> um, made by a studio. Which it isn't made by a studio, but yeah, you know what I mean? All right. So then the text, when we're starting, we see, we meet uh, Mika because he has the camera. And then he goes outside as Katie is arriving home and there's text that pops up on the screen telling us that it takes place in San Diego and it's September 18th, 2006. So a year before it released. Almost 14 years ago. And I I said that exactly (laughs) like that as we were watching it. And everyone was like, Oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Scary. And you turned off the movie. Um, And a fun fact. I don't want to watch this. (laughs) Guys, I'm scared. (laughs) starts crying um and a fun fact is that the entire movie was filmed in the director's own home i wonder if he gets scared i doubt it he's living my dream (laughs) in that home no it's a pretty nice house Uh, i well i have a lot of a lot to say about the house in a little bit but um there i just my favorite homes in movies like i'm trying to uh one thing i didn't like look into when i'm looking into like interior decorating like inspiration is i was like oh i should look at movies 
because movies mm-hmm. have like such good homes. But all the homes I could think of that I really loved were all horror movies, like horror movie movies or movies, <laughs> uh, homes. Like Hereditary is my dream home. That's a nice house. Yeah, and I Sebastian and I were talking about it, and I was like, if somebody told me you can have that exact home and live in it tomorrow, I'd pack my bags. I'd instantly live in it. Um, With the bodies in it and everything? <laughs> I mean, I'll clean it out if they give me a discount. <laughs> but yeah, so um, the first thing I'd like to know is how the two characters are already reacting to what's happening. So like I said, Mika like explains... He has the camera, like he bought it. And if you look in the frame, like in one of the frames, you can see the box for the camera, like on the couch. So Mm -hmm. it's like he just opened it and turned it on. Um, Katie is surprised and very confused by the camera. Um, Mika is very excited. (laughs) And he mentions, it's kind of like, you can, well, if you're paying attention, then you won't miss it. But he just kind of mentions that there's weird shit going on in their house and he wants to capture it. And so that's why he got the camera. Um, Another fun fact about this camera is that the entire film was shot with a home digital camera. So it's not like a, a expensive one. He probably did just buy, (laughs) leave the box on the couch and just started filming. (laughs) I also love, we have the first scene where it seems like something creepy is going on where Katie hears something in the kitchen and Mika's like playing on his guitar, but he gets up to like see what's happening and it just ends up being the the fridge, like the ice machine, which I really love (laughs) because it's very relatable, especially mine, my ice machine. Like now that I have one in my old apartment, I didn't have one. So I'm not used to the sound, but it sounds like, like, I think it, the way it works is like my ice is made in the back of the fridge and when it's done it like releases the ice and it falls to the front yeah mine mine works in a similar way there's like a tray and it like it just drops it into the tray so it like it, there's a noise that that happens and mine if you don't know what's happening like, it sounds it's scary. creepy mine sounds like knocking it sounds like somebody's night. It's by my door. So it sounds like somebody's knocking on my door. And there's been, when I first moved in, there was multiple times where I had to, I walked to the door and looked at the people because I thought somebody was knocking. Um, yeah. You just saw Katie. Oh my God. <laughs> Don't even. <laughs> there's many times at night where I just like look at my door and I see that last frame <laughs> and I just go to bed. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I just really like that fake out. Because that that mm-hmm. is so something that happens all the time where I'll hear a weird noise and I go investigate and I'm like, oh, it's this thing, like something fell or whatever. <clears throat> all right. And so we get into the first night. And so talking about the house, the one thing that has always fascinated me about how movies like this is just like how movies like this are scary to people. And there's like tons of ways, you know, just the the end is very scary or just the fact that something's in your house and you can't see it. But one that I think occurred to me while I was watching the movie is the house itself. And mm-hmm. so like we're talking about houses and horror films are always they always stay. I think the reason that they stand out to me like hereditary or even like insidious or an or hush or um, an old one like poltergeist, I feel like these stand out because they're so nice because they're huge and they look more like a prop than an actual home that's lived in. Mm -hmm. Um, But this one feels like a home, you know, and there's a couple of fun facts that I can like, that I found about the actual house. So like we said, it was the director's house and he spent a year redecorating it to like, get ready for filming so the walls were originally stark white in every room and there was no railing on the staircase so that was all added and the carpet upstairs um also was in the hallway but that had to be removed to accommodate the powder scene and the dragging scene but kind of back to how this house is like scary to me is that it's super recognizable it doesn't really look like, I mean, it's the director and I mean, I don't want to knock his idea or his whole like, uh, not idea, his effort in making this home ready for the film, but it's not really 
you can't you can tell that it wasn't like a crew of professional designers <laughs> that found all of this stuff to put in the home and make it you know look like a home uh off right off of like a movie set so I think that was genius to not do that because that might be an instinct of a director to get like a prop master to get somebody to like make the home uh, like to decorate it or whatever. But I do love, I don't know. I just, I love the, how they chose like what to put in there because it feels so much like that couple decorated it and they just like took whatever, you know? All right. There's not a lot, a lot of like stuff hanging up. Um, I don't know. It just feels, it feels very <laughs> recognizable. And I, I do remember like whenever I was watching this now, I do remember having the thought of like, when I first saw their bedroom, I was like, Oh, that looks like mom and dad's bedroom. <laughs> yeah. That's what, before, before I talk about that, I was going to say, what a, what a baller move. He's like, I'm gonna make this movie. <clears throat> but before that I need to renovate my house. I wonder how much money was a, that 18,000 was a part of like renovating his house or if it, was it wasn't 15. All. It wasn't 18,000. No, it was 15. <laughs> oh, well, how regardless, dare you? I wonder how much, like, that's so funny that he just was like, all right, I'm going to renovate my house before this movie. I mean, it's also his home. So I, I'm sure he wasn't like dragging his feet to replace the carpet in his hallway, you know? Yeah. <clears> yeah. <throat> but I, I but think yeah, that is super like smart though. Home. Like I, 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 if I was to make a scary movie and I mean, if it was somebody, I, you could kind of, like for hereditary, you can kind of make excuses that she's an artist, so her house would probably be pretty nice. But most people, when you go to their house, there's not really much hanging on the wall, or that you know, it just or I don't know, it has a very I don't know exactly what the style is in the home, but everything is so dark. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like all the stuff that they have, I could have found at Ross. <laughs> you know, like and I or I I wouldn't go to like anthropology or places that are super expensive. And right. I, but I really love that. I don't want to like <laughs> act like I'm making fun of it. I love that it's like that because it's like I see yeah, I said it feels like our parents' room. That's what made it so scary for me as a kid watching this. <laughs> Like, Same oh thing with the God. actors themselves because the way they're styled, the way that they like look, the way they dress, it's oh, there's it's, nothing really glamorous about it. It was one of my notes. My is uh, I don't know why the hell they let Mika wear jeans without any socks, just like jeans, jeans and flip flops. He's a real man. <laughs> that jeans, has no, no style. Like when he was in the like just out around the house, he just wore like. Boot, it looked like boot cut jeans, but he just didn't have any socks or shoes or anything on. It's like <laughs> just the hem, that? the hem dragging around that. House. Yeah. yeah. The but there is, is one this? scene. Do you remember that one scene where I think he's wearing jeans and flip flops? Like he's wearing like those boot cut jeans mm-hmm. with flip flops on. No stylist in their right mind would ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. And Katie's just always in like tank tops. You know, like there, there's yeah. nothing. But I, I love it. It's amazing. It feels like I it feels like I know them. Ugh, genius. Okay. Um then during this night, <laughs> after I got into my rant about the house, but around 2 a.m. is when we first hear movement. To me, it sounded like somebody's walking up the stairs. Then there's like a little slam of something, but you can't really hear it. But the next morning we do see that Katie finds her keys on the middle of the floor. And it does, like, when you look back at what the sound was, it does sound like somebody was just, like, throwing your keys around. Uh, um, it's, like, just middle, in the middle of the room. Yeah, and she's just standing there. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do to my keys? Also, like, why would he... I mean, I guess it's not, if he gets the camera, he's... I guess it's not, like, out of the ordinary to think that he's trying to freak her out for a yeah. reaction. But, yeah, I mean... He's kind of an ass. Yeah, I... I that's one thing I didn't realize until watching it this time is how much I don't like him. Like how much of a yeah, bad boyfriend sucks. he is. <clears throat> Not, I mean, well, we'll get to the end of it. <laughs> um, yeah. So the next part is when we have, there's a big moment of when we have the psychic coming over and Katie seems like excited about it. She seems like she's genuinely freaked out by what's happening. So she, you know, it's kind of like going to the doctor when you know something's wrong, like you get, kind of answers of what's happening but mika is not thrilled he's basically just making fun of the guy the entire time um before 
and while he's there and a little bit after too. Um, and just a little bit about this interaction with the psychic. He says that most problems are easily explained away, which I really like that he mentions that. Um, and he's asking them about, like, before he gets into what's happening, he asks them about their jobs, like what they do, how their relationship is, how long they've been together, just to get a feel for how they are. Because he does mention that when people see, when they think that they see like paranormal stuff happening, that it usually can just be um, stuff that they're hyper focusing on because they're stressed. Mm -hmm. um, so like, like we said, like, <laughs> if I was like a super stressed person, then the ice maker could always be knocking to me because I just get like, I don't know, I, I can just see how that can happen, how you get like paranoid when you're really stressed. <clears throat> we also learn a lot about Katie herself throughout this process of talking to the psychic. So we find out that she is having, ex she's been having experiences with like a ghost or whatever, whatever's happening since she was eight. She said that her and her sister had seen figures at the foot of their bed and they would feel breathing on them, just like a ton of weird shit. She also mentioned that her house burnt down and she said she that she doesn't know if it directly relates to what's happening, but she also mentioned that they never really figured out what happened. They didn't say if it was like an electrical thing. It just kind of happened. And so I feel like that's why she's bringing it up because it's a weird thing that happened in her childhood. Um, yeah. After that, she said that she had stuff happen periodically. I think she said when she was like 13, it happened again. And then when she was like in her 20s or she just mentioned that it just happens every so often. Every so often. Yeah. Um, And now it's starting up again. And I She's like, I wonder, I don't know if they've written this into the, like, lore of paranormal activity, but I just wonder if she, whenever she was, like, a teen or growing up, like, we know what happened when she was younger, but when she was growing up, I wonder if she ever thought to go to a psychic, like, how she dealt with it that time. But I guess it does make sense now that it's different because Micah's, like, egging it on. Yeah, he has a camera. <laughs> <laughs> and he and he literally is like antagonizing it but we'll get into that so she walks him around and gives him examples of what's been happening and just giving him a feel for the place mika shows him off all the stuff that he's using to record him or him the demon or go at this point we don't know what it is but it's a fucking demon um the psychic then tells mika that it feeds off of negative energy and trying to egg it on will just make it worse <clears throat> um oh and uh, this is kind of a fun fact but also calling out a mistake in the movie so while mika and katie are talking to the psychic he mentions this spirit feeds off of negative energy micah makes it is it micah or mika it's mika right mika mika makes a comment saying well your mom shouldn't come over in that case implying that julie which is katie's mom is still alive um and visiting her daughter however in Paranormal Activity 3, we later learn that Julie dies by the demon throwing her down the stairs with Katie crying by her body, therefore making Julie not able to ever visit Katie in San Diego. Because she's dead? Yeah. <laughs> I love IMDb. The way that they word certain things is so funny. <laughs> so she's dead. So that means she can't visit her. <laughs> therefore, making Julie not able to... <laughs> and I mean, I... Like I, I, I do like that that happens, though, because then it shows that this movie was made with the intention of not really having a sequel. Like, I, that's one thing I hate about certain, like, scary movies or just movies in general is when you can smell the sequel in it, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, but it is a good setup for it. Sorry, are we going to say something? No, I just I just like the <clears throat> looking back. I like the timeline because Paranormal Activity, this one is obviously on the couple the second one's on is it who i don't know who it is her sister it's just it, yeah it's her sister and the third one is like it is like a prequel almost it, it goes into like the 80s when they were ki when they were kids yeah the fourth one i don't know but uh, that one I, I don't remember um and then there was one with mexican people <laughs> that was the fourth one Oh, then maybe there was a fifth one then. There was another one. Is there really? Yeah. The fourth uh, one. So that one is not really, I don't, I think it's in, it's like a spinoff basically. So it's not technically a sequel, but I don't know. It, 
there well we'll talk about it later there is one element of that movie that i do like <laughs> but um yeah so he finally tells her after he's seen everything after he's heard what they said he tells her that he doesn't he deals with ghosts but she's not dealing with that <laughs> she's dealing with a fucking demon <laughs> I can't imagine how I would react if somebody told me that. And then he also tells her she can't run from it. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do. I'd probably punch the dude. <laughs> and then he mentions that he knows a guy named Dr. Johan Averys, which is the perfect name for a demonologist. Um, and he, he like refers her to him. And a fun fact is that he actually was cast with a real paranormal investigator from the Independent Investigations Group named Spencer Marks. The role was shot to help explain certain anomalies in the film. The role was predominantly mentioned in the movie, but footage was never used. That would have been cool. I wonder if they did it like in an interview style. And maybe that... Didn't fit. Yeah, like maybe they were going to end it with that, with him explaining... I wish they would have would at least done like a like a deleted scene. I would love to see that, but maybe, maybe I'll, maybe we can find it somewhere. Um, after that, uh, Mika asks if they can resolve it by giving it what it wants, which is such a stupid question. But he's like, dude, it, she it wants Katie, <laughs> so yeah, you like, can do that, but wants her. Um, yeah, he he brings up the stupid idea of using a Ouija board, which oh is like God. why, and he's like. Do not, do not fucking talk to it because then you'll open a door that you can't close, basically. He's like, yeah, of course. And he's like, well, I hope you're serious, man. I hope you're serious. I think he could tell. I think, I wish he would have said it though. I, I think he could, I mean, I don't know if, how I believe, how much I believe in like the whole psychic thing, but I feel like at the very least he can read people's energies. And I feel like he was looking at him being like, yeah, he's a fucking liar. He's just, he thinks he's better than it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, After this, Katie is really adamant about calling a demonologist, but Micah's Mika. I, sorry, I, I know other like, I know people that pronounce it the other way, so I'll probably pronounce it like both ways. Just that's gonna happen. That's whatever. Um. So he's like weirdly against it for some reason. I don't understand why. I think it maybe it's just this whole like toxic masculinity thing where he just feels like he can take care of it. And he can't. Yeah, I think it's part of that because he talks like he's he like I, I know in, in the later nights he's like, "This is my girlfriend. I'm gonna solve this." Like, yeah, no but one's like, gonna come in here. This is my house. But the the audacity to think you can deal with a demon. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I I can't imagine. Um. All right, so we're on the second night. This time, the door moves back and forth. And nothing other than that happens, so they're not, like, woken up by it. But the next day, uh, Mika does show Katie the footage, and she's freaked out. At this moment, I don't know how she just doesn't instantly call the demonologist. If you see shit, you have evidence of shit moving. I, yeah. I, don't, get it. I don't even know, man. And then to make it worse, when she's gone, I guess she, like, goes to school or something. When she's gone... He just antagonizes it. So he'll like move the door and be like, that's all you got. <laughs> He's so annoying. Um, <clears throat> then there's like a scene where right after where he's like reading a book. And so the book that he's reading is a 1971 trade paperback from Dover Publications titled Picture Book of Devils, Demons and Witchcraft by Ernst and Johanna Lenner. Um yeah, so if you wanted to know what that book is, if you wanted to own it yourself, then there you go. <laughs> Just look on Amazon, I'm pretty sure it's there. Um, at this time in the movie, something... Oh, <laughs> okay. So right when this scene happened, something... So Ari was, like, sitting with me, and something happened. Like, something fell in my apartment. I don't know what it was, but it made a really loud sound. <laughs> scared the shit out of me and our he like jumped up because he was sleeping was it toby maybe but i like got up because it, it was loud enough that it freaked out ari it just sounded like something fell but i i like mm -hmm. walked around my entire apartment and i still have no idea what it was <laughs> and so yep and i remember oh this is kind of embarrassing to admit but i remember like a long time ago i wanted to do 
<laughs> kind of like a that was like an assignment where you could do like a film analysis and I wanted to do it on this movie. And when I was researching it, <laughs> I think something in one of my tabs that I had open like started playing like a video and it freaked me out and so I just like closed everything and Bruh. then I wrote about another movie. <laughs> <laughs> And you get scared <laughs> out of that report. Yeah, I was like, there's no way. I, I think, I don't remember what I wrote about after that, but it was just very funny. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, it's so strange. That, like, never happens where something just, like, falls. I mean, I'm sure it was just, like, a weird, like, a, just a coincidence of just a bad, bad timing. Well, and I, I'm not that freaked out about it because, um, I, it sounded like it happened in my island. In my island, I have like cabinets where there's stuff in, and one of the doors was open. So that means that Ari was in it. So I'm sure he like messed with something and then it fell. Um, oh, yeah. It was just like a tipping <clears throat> point. Yeah. yeah. And so that's why I was like, oh, that's probably it. I'm also one of those idiots in the movie where I'll like investigate and then I'll be like, uh, oh. you know, like people are always like, don't go in there like I do. <laughs> <laughs> the worst, um, worst yeah. kind of people. I know. All right. After this, Katie asks Micah, Mika to leave it alone. He says that he didn't, she didn't. Okay. So he, he, she says like, just fucking leave it alone. I don't want to deal with it. And he brings up a point where he says that she didn't mention any of this whenever <laughs> they started dating, like not on the first day. And she was like, well, what am I, what am I going to do? like talk about the demon that follows me on my first day. And she's like, yeah, but like you didn't mention it on the hundredth day or when we moved in together. And okay. I get his frustration. I get that. Like if I moved in with Sebastian and then he told me, okay, fun fact, um, a demon <laughs> follows me every now and then I, I also would be upset, but his like whole justification for the camera stuff for wanting to like talk to it for wanting to figure it out himself is that, he feels he can have he can deal with it how he wants because she brought it to him and so she can't really tell him how to deal with it i do not agree because i feel like that's something when it's not like that argument i guess could be like i don't know like if there was some other thing that she had to deal with some other like uh, metaphorical demons that she had to deal with and he was like hey I have to deal with this my way you can't tell me how to deal with it but if this is a literal demon <laughs> yeah like what let's the... not let's not try to figure out our own ways to cope with it um yeah <laughs> I do think it is a funny argument and I, I do see how he can like gaslight her and how she was like I, I don't want to blame her because I do see how she was like um, so easy to relent to that because I do think that she feels guilty because it like she like he said she didn't explain that to him and I I don't know it is a difficult argument because I also would understand why she wouldn't because maybe she would hope that it would leave her alone after she got a boyfriend I don't know who knows but yeah after this we enter night number five. Katie wakes up abruptly from a really bad dream. I didn't get the timestamp for this, um, but I'm assuming it was like 2 or 3 a.m. Then they hear something slam downstairs and they decide to investigate but find nothing. As So after this, uh, Katie has a friend over and as she's over, Micah shows them a recording that he found. He says that he wants to communicate with the demon after hearing this. And so he wants to get a Ouija board and her and her friend are like, fuck no. Why would you do that? That's stupid. Mm -hmm. And then after this is night 13, Katie hears something moving downstairs or I think in her room around 3 AM. And this is when I was like, why would she sleep next to the door? And why do they sleep with the door open this entire time? <laughs> okay. They sleep with the door open. So the whole door thing, I sleep with my door open. Like a psychopath. What the hell? Well, I do that for a reason because uh. Ari likes to sleep with me. And if I closed him out of my room, then he would just meow at me all night. And his litter box is in the laundry room, which is like in the other side of the apartment. So that's why I leave the door open. I'm also not a bitch. So I'm not scared of having my door open. <laughs> I have like all doors open. I also have my closet door open. <laughs> Man, what the hell? Um, oh, I have, I have the we have the restroom door open then. But 
Yeah, and then I, but when Sebastian is here, I make him sleep closest to the door. <laughs> so, like, I don't understand sleeping that close to the door. I guess, though, I think if I didn't have a cat and if my house was like that, I think I would, I would not want to sleep that close to the door. I also just wouldn't put my room, I can't imagine putting my bed against the door or against the wall where the door is. Like yeah. not facing the doorway. Like I, I can at least face the doorway. So if something's coming at me, I, I can see it. You know, it was scary. In... Mm-hmm. How dare in, you? In, in Am our I boring house? you, Anthony? <laughs> no, I'm just tired. In our parents' house, <laughs> my room, it was like right by the AC. So if someone came into the room, I would know that... Or if someone like walked t- to my room, I would know that they were there because... The way that the AC was, it would just like the the body would block the noise, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I could I could like feel it and also hear it, but it was like it's like the same. That was the same feeling that would happen when it would turn off. <laughs> so when it turned off, I would think someone was there, and I was be like, "Oh shit, it's happening! <laughs> it's now. The time is now." How do you react to something like that, though? Like when you get scared, how did, how was your reaction? Mine is uh, to make peace with it. <laughs> a little bit of that, but a little bit of like, just like, it's not real. <laughs> uh, I think you just it, it up, like stuff like that. I think back then I would like read something, but now my reaction is like, well, I guess I'll be on TikTok for the next hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's easier to go on your phone and just distract yourself <laughs> as you die, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Yeah, my so, instinct isn't to like go check it out, <laughs> though. <laughs> oh, I always do. <laughs> uh, all right. So um, this is also the same night where we hear. Like, it sounds like a yell and then a huge, like, slam. And I remember in, like, here, it's kind of, I don't have, like, a good audio situation going on. So it was loud, but, like, not that loud. But I remember in theaters, it's so fucking loud. Mm. It scared the absolute shit out of me. Um, So I, I love that scare. And so we walk downstairs and they see the chandelier swearing back and forth. And now watching it. Like, because I've seen it so many times, <laughs> I just love imagining, like, the people making it. And they're like, okay, so just, like, we got to, like, sl- like swing the chandelier. Like, I just love picturing the director, like, swinging his chandelier. And then to going get to hide. Shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, so funny. All right. After this, um, Mika... <laughs> after katie's gone during the day mika also makes another terrible decision he just makes terrible decisions throughout this movie but he takes out the evp thing that he has and he just asks it a bunch of questions i should have looked up what evp is but basically it it's supposed to record i think like audio that you can't hear like it's on a different like wavelength or something um i don't really yeah, know much about like it that. and i should have looked it up but um yeah, he just asked it a bunch of questions, and then later when he listens back, he can hear like a grunting sound. Like and a, I, uh, I don't understand how he's so calm hearing that when he's like he's like laughing at it. Basically, <laughs> I would be so scared. I would leave Katie in an instant. I'm kidding. Um, all right, night fifteen. Katie sits up st- suddenly, stands up, and like just stands there for a couple of hours. <laughs> yeah. And she walks downstairs and out of frame. Um, Mika wakes up to find her outside, like on a swing thing. And the way that she is just sitting down out there and he's trying to get her to go upstairs, but she refuses. Like, she's like, no, I want to be here. It just, it, it's kind of scary, but it also is funny. Cause it reminds me of myself. Like when I get drunk. Oh, he just loved going. <laughs> he's just standing no, in I, a place for two yeah, hours. I, I just, it feels like a very drunk person thing to do to be like, no, I'm fine here. Like, there's this one, I think it's a, I don't know if it's a TikTok or a Vine, um, where there's this guy, I'll try to find it, I don't know if I can find it, but he's like, I want to sleep on the curb, and he, like, just trying to go, like, his friends are trying to take him inside, but he, like, really wants to go sleep on the curb. Um, Yeah, just drunk people are the worst. Um, Yeah. So after... (laughs) 
<laughs> Micah goes inside. He hears a noise in their room, and he goes into the room, and the TV is turned on, but it has a bunch of static. And I just love how old the TV is. I think that's the first time we see it, but it's like that's, the that's TV the that TV we're we about. had. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the so there's a part where he turns around, and she's standing at the doorway, and it scares like, me every single time. I had I had no recollection of that, and it scared the hell out of me. It scares me. I know it's going to happen, and I prepare myself, and I still jump every single time. Um, okay, and this is when we need to have a conversation. Okay. Yeah, what the hell? Why are their sheets so thin? <laughs> you know why? We, we when he first gets the camera and they take off, like they're getting ready for bed for the first night. <laughs> yeah, they take off like their comforter or oh, do whatever. They? Yeah, they like put it on the ground or something. Like, what the hell? What is <gasps> with the sheet that they're sleeping with? They're sleeping with. It's like a the flat sheet, right? That's what it's, it's like called. a one ply. <laughs> uh, I think it's called a flat sheet. I have no idea what it's called, but it's, well, it looks like they're sleeping with the fitted sheet. Look up flat sheet. But first of all, I just have an issue with people. Okay, <laughs> so I didn't I didn't realize that people actually sleep with those. Are you serious? I think Sebastian has one, and his like he he he's like good about just everything and so he had like he makes his bed almost every day and he has oh. a flat sheet like he has the fitted sheet the flat sheet and then a comforter no and yeah that's I'm how you're one. supposed to have but like what like it's so weird to me i didn't know people actually did that i had one in my dorm it was a small one but i, I never have... used it as the main as my main well, source he of he doesn't make it he doesn't use it as his main one but he has one and i've never that's my first thing is i don't understand why people have them they what uh, do they do it's just like i don't know it's exactly like another... like, what do they do but this one they only use the flat sheet i don't get it it like genuinely i know i always say like oh let us know and i we're mostly joking but genuinely if you sleep with just a flat sheet please i i need to i have so many questions if you have like, maybe have I should. Maybe I need to. Life? Maybe I need to make a poll on Instagram because I really want to know if people have them just in general. I'm gonna do it. Do it. Do because, it right now. No, I need to wait till this move the movie until this podcast comes out because people are gonna be like, "What the fuck is she talking about?" <laughs> but I really no. I genuinely need. I need to know because I've never owned one. In my, I think maybe when we were kids, but I yeah. Well, what is the point? Just have a comforter. Yeah, it's stupid. I, it bothered me so much. I'm sure they used it for the effect of yeah. like you can see where they're they are. And so I get that, but like I don't know. I think it's also a Texas thing. If we have any listeners outside of Texas, please let me know if you do this because I'm learning now on like TikTok and Twitter that I own. I think only Texas people sleep with a fan and AC on. Yeah, I mean it's hot. Because I do that, and then people are like. Like people were talking about how only Texas people do that, and I'm like, nobody does that. Like, is it is it just us? Because mm -hmm. they're like, why do you sleep with a fan and AC, and then you have a comforter? I'm like, that's how you sleep. What do you mean? <laughs> that's how you do it, man. Yeah, I bundle the fuck up, and I'll, I'll do you one better. Even in the winter, I keep my fan on. I don't have the AC on because I'm not psychotic, but I have my fan on. I have my fan on at all times. Yeah, I might get out of my fan business. <laughs> Okay, it's well, on right damn. now. It's on right now, and I'm freezing, and I'm not turning it off. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I just, I, I don't get the the flat sheets. I don't get it. And I'm sorry if that's not what they're called. I'm pretty sure they are though. But all right. So <laughs> that was the number one thing I was so excited to talk about because I knew you would have the same exact reaction. I was like, man, I, it's honestly, so thin. I, I noticed it. <laughs> of course, the demon is going to get you because your your sheets are so thin. I I noticed it, but I was like, I I don't know. I didn't want to like, I don't want to think it was real. And then my roommate pointed out, I was like, why are they sleeping with that? I was like, <laughs> also, damn, they you are. Know, you know, another thing that bothered me. So like, I think everybody has a collective experience of not wanting to sleep with their legs out because then the demon will get you, right? Like you don't mm -hmm. want to have your foot exposed because then the demon will drag you. The fact that they have the audacity to have an, a literal demon inside of their home and still have their legs exposed, they deserved it. <laughs> they really, yeah. They absolutely deserved every part of this. 
They ha- they got no protection. Sleep? How dare you not have the protection of a comforter? That's exactly why. It's like demonology why. 101 to get a thick blanket and to be under it. That's why. <laughs> That's why Mexicans never get haunted because for one, we always because <laughs> sleep, with, the, we sleep with comforters and we have holy water. Even if we're not Catholic, we have holy water. Yeah. I have some. And I when I was moving out, I told mom, I was like, I can't throw this away. What do I do with it? And then she was like, I don't know. And I was like, okay, I'll keep it. I need to get some. <laughs> I don't we don't have any here. I know. Like even even the ones like I maybe this is a Catholic thing. I'm gonna assume it's just a Mexican thing. But yeah, like there are certain things, even though I love horror films. And like I said, I'm not religious. There are still certain things I won't fuck with. You will never catch me touching a Ouija board. A Ouija board? Yeah, never. I, I don't. I mean, I don't. In my brain, I don't believe anything would happen. But like, I'm not going to chance it. You ain't never going to catch me with a Ouija <laughs> you ain't board. Never going to catch me. Oh man. <laughs> like legit, yeah, I will. I will leave a party if if I go <laughs> if I go to a party and there's a Ouija board. I'm I'm leaving. You know what I'm gonna do the next time I have a get together. I'm gonna have like a charcuterie board with just a bunch of like nice meats and cheeses and stuff. And as people <laughs> get off of it, they're gonna it's gonna reveal it's a Ouija board. Holy holy shit! It's a Ouija board. <laughs> I would I would sue. <laughs> I also when I was moving, I also have so many crosses, and I was like, well, I can't throw this away. I can't do. Like, maybe I'll donate it, but I don't know if I can. You know, what'd be really crazy <laughs> is like. I'm just thinking about this now. But what if, like, here's here's a scene where where someone's, uh, like tearing up carpet, like getting new floorboards, and then when they do it, they they just see a Ouija board there. Like, what if what? Because we did that. Like, we tore up the carpets in mom and dad's home. Like, mm-hmm. what if we found a Ouija board? We gotta move out. <laughs> <laughs> Sell the house. <laughs> I don't know. It was just my thought. <laughs> it was a dumb thought, but whatever. No, I mean, I'm not touching it. <laughs> I always joke <laughs> with my friends that I'm going to, because they know that I like spooky things. And I always joke that I'll bring, I was like, what would you do if I like, we had a party and I brought out a Ouija board. My friend's like, I'm not even kidding. I would leave. <laughs> <laughs> even if it's at their own house. <laughs> <laughs> no, you I can would have never. it, man. Here's the keys. He can, I, I, yeah, I, I would never, never bring that. one to somebody's house. <laughs> oh that's the key that's i don't understand why people don't talk about it enough the key to have a comforter have holy water mm-hmm. it's not that hard <laughs> all right sorry that's such a long tangent okay so da, da, da. so he shows her the video he keeps showing her the videos of everything that happens and i just feel so bad for katie because <laughs> she's because yeah. i mean he it's to him it's like oh look at this it's so cool but then like it's happening to her and it's been happening for so long and I don't know, it's just so triggering. And then, oh, well, this is a perfect way to get into this conversation because like a fucking idiot, he breaks out his Ouija board that he got. Got a stupid ass Ouija board. <sighs> and Katie is obviously pissed. So they, and they're going out and like at that, I would be like, you know what? I'm going out by myself, fucker. Like I would not, I don't understand how she still goes out with him. And then while they're gone, of course, the thing on the Ouija, I don't even know what it's called, but I think it's a cursor. It moves while they're gone and it catches on fire. Oh, and fun fact about the Ouija board, Oren Pelly bought it at Costco. (laughs) 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 You laugh so hard. You know, just just another thing about the the Ouija board. (laughs) It's like if I was an actor and I paid millions to do a movie and they, like I have to do deal with the Ouija board, I wouldn't do it. I legit wouldn't do it. Oh, how much are we talking? <laughs> like 15 million. I would not do it. Before or after taxes? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Even even before or even after. I feel like for me, there is a price on attaching a, we- uh, a Ouija board, attaching a demon to my soul. I, oh. I, I have a price. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and it's 50 on. million <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like he so she is pissed and there's a funny so i forgot how funny this movie is <laughs> like there's a moment where she gets like really pissed at him and i think this is it when he like goes downstairs like you know what hang out with your friend up there <laughs> oh my gosh yeah <laughs> that, I, you know what i would have not been mad at him after that i'd be like you know what that's kind of funny <laughs> <laughs> 
that was fucked up. But it was kind of really funny. She does make him apologize to the camera and kind of the demon. And I don't know how she just lets him sleep in her bed. I mean, I maybe for protection, but she's still asleep in next to the damn door. So she's not protected. Yeah, I don't know what um, the hell she's thinking. But it is kind of dumb for us to think that it would protect her. But in my mind, I'm like, yeah, it, this would be solved if she just switched sides. <laughs> um i also Movie would make over. him i would make him sleep on the swing outside she's so, all alone by herself she doesn't want to be alone i know maybe well make him sleep on the floor i don't know <laughs> but <laughs> um yeah the next day he's still fucking with the ouija board and she puts up with so much i mean he's basically trying to i mean i don't know i get it at this point if i'm already touching it if you already brought it in my house i guess yeah figure out what it was trying to say um he also decides to do the the baby powder trick and i tried to find something about it but i couldn't really i mean it's kind of self-explanatory that if you want to see if like something is moving in your house or there's a bunch of there's this one place um and i think it's in san antonio but there a lot of towns have it where like they say that if you um stop at a certain like railroad track Oh, you know what I'm talking about? And then you put baby powder on the back of your car and put it in you, neutral. Yeah, you put move. it in neutral. Your car will move across the railroad tracks and then you can look at the um, the back and see handprints. That's I have, a bunch of BS. I've never done the baby powder thing. I don't think. But I went with Sebastian's family and we went to that railroad track. And even though I, I don't really think it's a, I, I think it's just a, like a anomaly, but it is really cool to do. I kind I recommend if you can like find a place like that. It's pretty fun. I saw a video on it. It's like it's just a slight in, incline, and the the whole baby powder thing is it it just because you're if you touch your hands on it on the back of your car, it's gonna stay there just like the oil. So when you put the powder, it's just picking up yours or yeah. your kids. But I, like I said though, like being in the car while it like and we went at night too. It was mm. fun. Like it was a cool experience. And I mean, it does, it takes your car. It's not like it just goes downhill. It takes your car over the railroad tracks. Yeah. So it's fun, but like, meh. um, all right. So we're at night 17 at around three, around, <laughs> wow. Around 3 15 AM. We see the footsteps from the powder. Um, oh, when they, wait, 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 wait. I have one of my notes because he oh when he's doing the baby powder, he's like, oh, we're going to catch the bastard or whatever. He says something that's so funny because <laughs> she's freaking out, obviously, because it's a demon. Yeah. Or whatever. It wants to hurt her. He says, take a breath, pop a pill. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, excuse me. I just. I, I <laughs> he's pretty. He's kind of funny in this movie. He's annoying and he's really mean, but he's pretty funny. Take a breath, pop a pill. That had me laughing but <laughs> but oof. continue yeah in the middle see. of a fight if sebastian told me that <laughs> mm -mm. pop a cap in him you're like you know what the demon never said that to me <laughs> <laughs> all he does is whisper my name what do you do you antagonize me all right <laughs> um then after they investigate katie notices that the attic door is open um, a fun fact, it looks like our houses, I mean, a bunch of people have the same attic thing, but ours was broken. I don't know how, like somebody broke it. And My so dad it, broke it. Yeah, <laughs> so it looked like, I don't know, it just always reminded me of the scene because mm -hmm. it just looked weird. <laughs> um, then uh, Mika goes up to see what is in there, if anything. Um, and then he finds something. He goes to get it, and they find that it's a burnt picture of Katie whenever she was a kid. Um, after this, Katie is, like, super freaked out. She calls the demonologist, and he's not available. Uh, I think he's, like, probably on vacation or something. Where do you think a demonologist goes on vacation? Uh, like, you know demons are real, and you go on vacation? <laughs> like, how do you do right. that? <laughs> his, his duty is... I don't know. I, I don't bet know. he goes yeah. somewhere boring. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. He went to the river walk. <laughs> but uh, wherever he goes, though, I would want to go because that's where for, there for sure are no demons. Did Did you mention the the footprints? How oh like no, no, little chicken feet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what I was expecting, but not that. Yeah, I remember them to be. <clears throat> I thought they were more like chicken feet. 
like, no, they're bigger. They, yeah, they're they're bigger. I mean, like more like scaly. <laughs> this one was just like it was just it just looked like if I take my three fingers, my three middle fingers, and place them down. <laughs> that's what it kind of looked like. I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, humans made it, so like that's what it's gonna yeah. look like. Um. So then she called the psychic because he, that guy was not available. I don't think he's on vacation. I I think she just said he's not available. I don't know. I'm assuming there's a lot of demons in the world, so he's got to figure he's got to yeah. help other people. But um, yeah. So the psychic is gonna be there the next day. So on night 18, the demon. He, I love this part where he's like walking upstairs, but he turns on the light before. <laughs> uh. So he turns on the light, goes upstairs, um, and then we hear him. This scene is my favorite scene because, like, Micah or Miko, like, turn turns on. <laughs> he wakes up. <laughs> he wakes up, and he like notices the walking and then we hear like somebody running and then the door slams so it's like he's like oh he caught me um and then he (laughs) turns out um and then stuff starts to happen during the day so we hear like something upstairs fall and then we they go and investigate and they see that somebody had hit or the demon somebody uh the demon had hit mm-hmm. a picture of them but he only hit where Mika's face is and then he scratched it and he's like oh why my, why my face oh yeah he's like why did he do it to me um yeah and then because you're an ass Mika another this just a lot of these sequence events of events are so funny to me so the psychic comes and then he's instantly like yeah i gotta go <laughs> i cannot be here this is disgusting oh and katie she's terrified like she goes upstairs and starts crying she's like doesn't know what to do i i feel for her um but that scene is so funny he's like yeah i gotta go <laughs> it's like uh, the equivalent <laughs> is like how i would assume <clears throat> I would react going to like a hoarder's house. Like, um, yeah, I can't be here. This is just too much. I cannot be here. It for does, this. The energy does not want me to be here. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It's just. Can you imagine we, like doing that to a friend? Like, if I if I came to visit your apartment <laughs> for the first time, uh, and I was like, "Yeah, I the de- uh, like it does I have not to want go. I'm sorry. it does not I have want to go. me here. Um, I have to go." <laughs> You're like, holy shit what that would the? be really funny though i would commit to that bit where i would drive all the way to college station go inside your apartment mm. and then leave i cannot do this that would be so funny all right and then night 19 it's just the same old like he's just wasting electricity turning on all the goddamn lights mm-hmm. which is probably just any dad's nightmare he's like why are you turning on all those lights turn them off <laughs> <laughs> it's like with ari too like he'll open cap like he knows how to open cabinets but then he won't close them like i don't mind like i'm sure katie doesn't mind that he's turning on the lights but like turn them off (laughs) (laughs) and he's also breathing on her which is not nice um then there's a scene where um mika shows katie like just this page about this girl diane who he figured that's what he like figured out that's what the demon was like telling him with the ouija board and it's just a lengthy online video of the exorcism. Uh, oh, there was like a longer scene of the whole like video, but then they cut it down a lot. Um, da, da, da. Oh, and then he like mentions that it seems like it's that it's the demon that's following her, but it just randomly decides who to haunt. And then I was like, why would you show her this? Right. He's especially, the worst. especially like the pictures of the lady afterwards when she died. <laughs> Like what? Oh, I respect <clears throat> him for recording it so we could see it, but like in the moment, what the hell, man? Yeah. And then we enter night twenty, and the demon is getting very bold. So he just <laughs> he just straight up pulls Katie out of bed. I, I, this because is where her I kind of mixed exposed. it up. Exposed. This is where I kind of like uh, mixed two different movies because I thought she was going to get pulled down the stairs. Oh, yeah. You're thinking about the second one. And I was like, because uh, this is the part we watched this morning. I was, I was telling Kayla, oh, she's going to get pulled down the stairs. And she just got pulled into the next room. And Mika was like, let go of her, you demon. Let go of her. <laughs> and I was, and she was like, you're a liar. Kayla said that to me. But uh, <laughs> that's why I, I got mixed it all. 
Um, and then the next day, we find that Katie has a like a really gross bite on her back, and I wonder and he who just did pushes that. It. <laughs> he just, just like, like pokes at it. <laughs> He's oh, the fucking dude, worst. I hate him. This dude's an ass. Um, and then he finds her later with. Like she has a bloody hand holding a cross and he's like <laughs> my favorite line of the movie. He's like, this is over right now. <laughs> <laughs> he burns the cross like what? <laughs> Wouldn't you want that? What the hell? <laughs> then, yeah. then she's like, all right, we need to leave. Like we need. Oh, no, no, this was before that. She's like, we need to leave. And he's like, all right, I'll, I'll start packing. <laughs> then after this, after she holds the cross. She she does act like a complete weirdo, and she's yeah. in bed, and she's like, you know what? We're fine. We don't have she's to like, leave. I think it would be best if we stay. I think that's exactly what she says. Yeah, and then she like and he leaves. He's like, all right, whatever. And they unpack, and she just like smiles at the camera. That's really creepy. She's creepy. Then, all right, night twenty one. I think of the last night. Um, Katie gets up, stands over Mika like a fucking weirdo, and it's like an hour or two. Then she goes downstairs and she's like screaming super loud. Mika Screams obviously his name. Bash, and then he runs downstairs and then we hear him yelling and then just everything stops. And I've seen this movie so many times. Like I don't I can't really count how many times, but it's so many times. And this scene still makes me nervous. <laughs> like every time I see it, I still like feel that same butterflies. Um <clears throat> then we hear somebody walking up the steps. Then Katie throws Mika right at the camera. <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, and then when the camera lands, we see Katie standing at the doorway and she's covered in blood. She bends over Mika and smelling him kind of like a, like a, like an animal would just mm-hmm. like smelling him. And oh, she looks creepy. Um, da, da, da. And then she looks up at the camera. And I, I remember this so vividly in the movie theater. And we were like, everybody was screaming when she looks up at the camera and then she crawls toward it. And then we see like a glimpse of her like demon face whenever it gets close to the screen and then cut to black. And then there's some like text just telling us that uh, Mika's body was found, but Katie's whereabouts remain unknown. And Kayla was like, what? They don't know where she is. <laughs> <laughs> like she was serious or joking. Uh, a little bit of both. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so I have a couple of fun facts about the end, and then we'll get into just fun facts in general. So the knife that Mika is wielding when he is talking to Katie during the making of the dinner scene at the beginning is the same knife, and he, like, jokes about, like, cutting himself. That's the same knife that he's killed with Um, in the alternate ending, but we can kind of assume that it's in every ending he's killed that way. Um, And the original ending, so the this movie has actually three endings and the original ending was changed at the suggestion of steven spielberg Ah. so there's three endings the first is the original ending that uh steven spielberg was talking about and it was katie waking up standing by the bed then going downstairs she then calls mika in panic mika goes downstairs screaming um, and then quiet, somebody is going up the stairs. It reveals to be Katie with a bloody shirt and a bloody knife in her hand. She sits by the bed, rocking back and forth for hours. Um, <clears throat> but this is like sped up. And her friend comes to visit the house. We hear her downstairs freaking out because she found Mika on the floor. But then she leaves. The police arrive right after that. Um, it's two cops. And then we see... The body, what? Oh, they see the body. They go upstairs. They find Katie and she snaps out of it and she's like confused. She's asking where Mika is, but she's holding the knife. And so they tell her to drop it, but she's like going, like she's walking towards them and she doesn't because she doesn't know what's going on. And then they shoot her. Mm. So that's the first ending, the original one. The second ending is the theatrical and Blu ray ending. So if you were to buy the movie or if you like the one we see on Netflix, this is the ending that you see. And it depends on which time you saw it when it first released but the ending that i saw was the one on netflix so the one that everybody sees um the third ending is another alternate ending (coughs) and it's very similar to the original but up until when katie kills uh mika downstairs 
after that she comes back up she's in the same like bloody clothes she closes the door behind her she goes to the camera and then she takes the knife that she killed him with and slices her throat oh my gosh and i so i don't know if it's still available but i think you could still see those two endings i've seen all three um so i think you i think you can see both of them online somewhere like on youtube um i if i remember i'll put in the discord if i find them but yeah i personally like the one that we saw the theatrical um Oren Pelly, who's the writer director, he said that he loved the original ending, but it didn't test well with audiences. Um, and with guidance from the studio and with an extra budget, he was able to shoot another one. He said that he still likes the original ending and tried to fight for it for a while, but he is okay with the theatrical one they chose. I, I don't, I, I don't know. I like the theatrical one a lot. Yeah, it leaves like. It leaves a sort of like mystical, like what the hell happened to her? Yeah. And it is like, I feel like it's the first special effects that we see. Mm-hmm. Like CGI. And I think that is very striking, especially with the movie that doesn't have any of it. Um, yeah. And one thing that I did not know and learned while like researching this movie is that there is another ending planned. <laughs> and what? this ending is where... Uh, Katie corners Mika and bludgeons him to death with the camera. And Ugh. so as a viewer, we would watch from the camera's point of view. In fact, this version of the ending was so complicated, not to mention super brutal, that Pelly never actually shot it. That would have been. I think, honestly, I would have probably liked that. I don't know. I think I still would like the theatrical one. But that one would have been probably awesome. <laughs> I feel like the time it was made it was too brutal but i see way like just watching that show the boys <laughs> i feel like i would be i would be so like desensitized feel nothing. yeah i mean i don't know it depends on how they shoot it but yeah all right so a couple of fun facts we got we actually have a few all right so the director got the idea for the movie from a personal experience late at night he was sleeping and a box of detergent fell off of his shelf the box was pushed back too far for it to just tilt and fall um, so that is the whole inspiration for this movie. Um, the filming was completed in 10 days, or I guess original filming, because I think they reshot some stuff. It was shot in 2006, but not put into general release until 2009. Out of the eight people hired to star in the movie, only five cast members remain at the, in the theatrical release. All the crew had to wear black clothes at all times, so no colored reflections would show up in the walls or colored or wooden floors. Um, all of the special effects were practically done in camera and it w- they were enhanced by director um, Oren Pelly and his PC. Katie and Katie Featherston and Mika Sloat were reportedly paid just $500 each for their performances. But due to the success of the film, the director Katie and Mika nego- negotiated, renegotiated um, the amount. Oh, yeah. They did them they do really so. good. Katie is st- <laughs> scary. Yeah. Um, Steven Spielberg had to stop watching the film halfway through halfway through on a home screener and he because he was genuinely spooked by the experience. Um, he completed it in daylight hours the next day and loved it. That's be- so Steven Spielberg is a little bitch. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, during the first test screenings, people started leaving the theater. Originally, the crew thought this was because the film wasn't going over very well with its audience, only to discover that people left the auditorium because they couldn't handle the intensity. That's I can see that. I wouldn't yeah, leave, but I could I, see it being too intense for some people. Yeah. Um. The actors weren't given scripts, but were given guidelines on how to behave or what to discuss in their scenes. So I wonder if um, the real Mika is that funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, according to the timestamp on the video, many of the demonic activities occur between 2 and 3.30 a.m. This time is known as a, quote, dead time among paranormal researchers and is when demons, spirits, and entities are supposed to be their most active. So Isn't it? Like, Apologies like the, for that knowledge now. <laughs> it's like the witching hour too, right? I always thought it was three to four, but apparently it's two to three thirty. But yeah, it, so um yeah. 
apologies if now tomorrow you wake up and it's like 2 a.m and then you freak out because it happened to me last night (laughs) really yeah but i I just wake up randomly sometimes that's weird (laughs) sometimes when i go to i'll admit this man every single time he only does it once though yeah um if ever i stay up really late and it's like three (laughs) o'clock i'll wait until four (laughs) (laughs) i do that too yeah or if I wake up in the middle of the night, it's like two thirty. Gotta wait till three thirty. Yeah. Now, now I know it's two three thirty, so I'll never, never go to bed at like two fifteen. Nah, staying That's up. That's so funny to me though that they would be like stuck between like demons are supposed to be super powerful, right? That they're stuck between like a, a time, <laughs> like uh, an it, hour and a half. Like they're, they're like <laughs> it's kind of like when you um like if it, when I worked at Target or something, if they were if my shift ended at like 3 30 and then my boss was like hey can you do i'm like no i'm clocked out I can't do it <laughs> I, I can't anywhere i'm sorry i'd <laughs> love devil, to possess you but i can't the devil's like hey can you just like knock on their door and like sorry i clocked out can't uh, look at the time okay you see I that can, it's 3 31 I, I can do it uh first first thing tomorrow but i cannot do it tonight <laughs> <laughs> yeah you should out of luck looks like it's the ghost time <laughs> They're like, yeah, but it's three thirty one. Like, maybe they'll not know. They won't notice. Yeah, but I, I, I have to be reliable. If anything, <laughs> a <right>. punctual demon. <laughs> <laughs> the only kind I want, honestly. All right, Paramount Studios utilized paranormal researcher Christopher Chacon, who Chacon. is <laughs> who is recognized as one of the world's foremost experts on paranormal phenomena, to promote and publicize the film. He also works in the entertainment industry as a writer, director, and producer. Nice. DreamWorks wanted to remake the movie with a bigger budget and better known actors rather than release the film as it was and use the original as a DVD extra. I'm so glad they didn't do that. Studios have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. (coughs) Yeah. Because, like, can you imagine watching this and it's like, I don't know. Tom Cruise. Yeah. It's that's Jennifer Aniston. The whole point of this movie is that you don't know who the fuck they are. They're just normal people. Yeah. All right. Um, Paramount acquired the U.S. rights for $350,000. The film went on to make $193 million worldwide, making this the second most profitable film ever based ever made based on a return of investment. The first, have you, did you already read it? Yeah, I already read oh. it. The first most profitable is the Blair Witch Project, which cost twenty two thousand and made two hundred forty point five million. Wow, Jesus! All right, producer Jason Bloom worked at Miramax in the nineteen nineties, almost the nineteen hundreds. Uh, in the 1990s as a movie distributor and passed on the opportunity to acquire the Blair Witch Project. What an idiot. A decision he quickly <laughs> a decision he quickly regretted when the movie became one of the most profitable low-budget movies of all time. The market quickly became saturated with knockoffs made for more money, but without the financial success. When the time was right, Bloom produced his own low-budget found footage film with paranormal activity a decision that paid off and he was able to find or to found bloom house productions with the profits so oh, bloom house that. yeah i actually i'm surprised that i actually did know that um and bloom house is made like i think they made get out they make tons they of make, amazing scary movies yeah they make great movies um yeah but i love i didn't i did not know i knew that he produced um paranormal activity but i I didn't know about him passing on blair witch project which i don't blame him for how are you gonna know that that's gonna do well somebody told me hey um i made this movie on a camera that i bought for uh five hundred dollars and i went to the woods (laughs) okay but like what is the monster um you you don't see it yeah you don't ever see it no thank you (laughs) all right last one during the weekend of october 9th through 11th 2009 it reached number four at the u.s box office while playing in only 160 theaters the fewest number of theaters for a top five film since box office data was regularly tracked in the 1980s that's crazy good there you go i i mean i love this movie it's one of my favorites honestly I want to say it's like a top five movie for me, but I think it's just the nostalgia thing of it. But I think it also is just a, a great movie. 
Yeah. I, like I said, I thought it was, I thought there was going to be more. I thought more was going to happen, but I'm, I'm glad I picked it. It's a good one to start Spooktober. Oh, do you want to talk about the sequels or no? Uh, I, the only thing that like kind of interests me is because we don't ever see Mika die. I think in the fourth yeah, one, I kind of they like kind of they kind of go into it because they like go back in time. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I, so I don't like that movie, but I do like that scene. So it's a it's a spinoff. So it has like different characters. Um, it's the Mexican one we're talking about, and at the end they like travel back in time and they go to this house and they go to whenever it happened, but we still don't see him die. I think. But we see Katie. Yeah. But I do, I did like that. Like, as somebody who loves the first one so much, it did make me a little bit excited to, like, whenever, as soon as they, like, I think how it happens, now I want to watch it again, but as how it happens is they, like, are plopped into a different time and they're so confused, I instantly knew where they were. (laughs) Yeah. Because I'm so familiar with that house. Um, Yeah, I love it. It would be nice. I wonder if you could, like, I need to look up if you could go see the house. <laughs> I would love to go see it. And just I wonder if he still it. lives there. The director. I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure he doesn't live there because he how much money he made. Uh, um, I would keep it though if I was him. I would never get rid it. of it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just like that idea because like you're just put back into that that. Uh, it's kind of like the same thing, but with like Avengers when they go back in time in the end game. <laughs> Yeah, Paranormal Activity think, did it first. Mm-hmm. Paranormal Activity uh, walked so Endgame could run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I like I said, the second one, I mean, nobody asked me, but if I was t- uh, going to rank them, or if I was going to tell you the ones to watch, um, one and two are the only ones that exist to me. The rest of them? No, sir. The third one's kind of cool. Like you said, I like the... <laughs> So yeah. there's some new like, mechanics that they use that oh, are pretty cool. I think cool. there's like six. There's oh, so after. Bro, so there's the prequel. Like there's a prequel, then there's a prequel to the prequel. Then there's the one that follows Hunter. Then there's oh. the Mexican one. Then there's another one. The the Mexican one you're talking about is called the marked ones. It's the Mexican one to me. The Mexican ones. That one's so funny because I don't know if he Mexican. Like, I don't want to assume, but like I think he like are. gets. The, like he gets powers <laughs> he's just like yeah. showing off <laughs> that I, one's so that one's funny. weird <laughs> that one that one creeped me out as uh too because it's like an apartment complex and they go into they see like a naked lady but she's like oh, she kills yeah. herself that one that one freaked me out that one has a lot of good elements to it i also like how they used like the whole egg thing and right yeah i won't i won't explain what that is you just have to watch it um yeah, so there's like tons of movies. First and second are the best ones to me. Um, yeah, yeah, love this movie. Glad to watch it. Like you said, it's a good way to kick off. All right, I had, I I knew exactly what movie I wanted to do for the next one, um, because we're we start off with something familiar, something like nice that we both have watched that we love i want to pick a movie that i know you have never seen but i also know this is my theme of movies that you've never seen but new movies that people probably have never heard of um but it is one of my favorite scary movies of all time and it's called lake mungo Mm. on amazon prime lake mungo lake m-u-n-g-o on amazon prime it is so smart in the way it does it. Um, I don't have like a synopsis, but I kind of just don't, I don't want to, I, I don't want you to know how it is until you watch it. All right. I think you'll really like it, but we'll see. It's a movie I've been like dying to pick ever since it came on Amazon Prime like last month and I've been waiting. And so I'm so fucking excited. Yeah, it should be good. All right. Go watch it. Lake this Mungo sh- on Amazon Prime. This will be uh, an hour 40 or something like that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Whatever. I think this one was good, though. We went yeah. off, off on a lot of tangents, so it'll be fine. Um, 
all righty what was it? oh and also today is october 1st is when we're releasing it go to our discord um i'm going to be posting a different movie for every single day of october a different oh. scary movie to watch on a streaming service so if you go to our discord you can find that link on our instagram at brother sister show and then our twitter at bro sis show all right and you can wish Olivia a happy birthday because tomorrow friday for my birthday don't be mad at me that all of our episodes are almost two hours (laughs) yeah happy birthday thanks bye